Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing JR Binga in a 5 plus 5 game on chess.com. It's another climbing the rating ladder game. My opponent opens with d4, playing against a 1643 from Brazil. Okay, d4, let's play knight f6. The most popular response to d4. Okay, and I think I'll try to head in for uh, Nimzo Indian. Yeah, bishop b4, white plays knight c3, so I can play bishop b4, pinning that knight. And bishop g5, okay. That's already a slightly unusual move. So white's setting up a counter pin here. I think I'm gonna play h6, just challenge that bishop. And now if white takes, I think I'm gonna insert bishop takes c3 check. I think I like this option because it's an in-between move. It disrupts what white is doing. So white has to respond to the check. So now I'll be able to recapture. I wanna say I had a climbing the rating ladder game exactly like this. Where we're able to trade off two sets of minor pieces and I know this doesn't look like anything exciting, but strategically, black has already accomplished a pretty big goal here of giving white the doubled C pawns, so I can look forward to that. Play against those pawns. Let's play d6 here, and I'm going to look to Fianchetto this bishop. You can see it's kind of blocked this way, so preparing to Fianchetto the bishop makes a lot of sense. You can play knight c6 first, maybe. I think I'll probably do that. Don't see a lot of danger to my king. White does have this bishop lined up against the h7 square, but I don't see any grave danger to my king, so I'm gonna play knight c6. If I had started with b6, maybe white could toss in bishop e4, and then I'd have to play c6 and potentially mess up my structure a little bit. So I think I'm gonna play knight c6 first, then b6, and perhaps even get the bishop to a6. Okay, white plays e4. I should probably put a stop to this advance by playing e5. I mean, it's not mandatory yet, but yeah, I think I do like it. Maybe I'll even play bishop g4 now that the position is changing slightly. Okay, and white plays d5. And now that creates a nice potential weakness here. So I would love to be able to teleport my knight to this square. So it even crosses my mind to play knight b8 to d7 to c5. But I could also just play knight a5, b6, bishop here. This plan I was describing. Although knight b8 might actually be very interesting, especially if I can pair it with bishop g4 and taking that knight because if i go here and execute this maneuver and attack c4 with everything i've got white's going to defend it and i might actually slightly regret my knight positioning on a5 as strange as that seems so actually i'm going to play knight b8 so undeveloping the undevelopment is okay here because the position is so closed i think that's important to point out okay now h3 mm-hmm Stopping bishop g4, I think that's a good move on white's part, but let's continue with this. And I hope I can prove that white's bishop is just a bad piece and may even cause white some tactical concerns if white leaves it on d3. Okay, so white plays it to c2. Now, bishop takes h3 is one tactic I can keep in mind trying to deflect this pawn, but for the moment it doesn't work because white's queen will be defending the knight. So I'm thinking about b6 here, again, looking for bishop a6. I'm thinking about moving my queen and maybe trying for f5, but I'm going to go with b6. Now, white is playing extremely fast. White has more time than we started with. I have 3 minutes 48 seconds out of this 5 plus 5 game, so I feel pretty good. We're in the middle game now. Okay, knight d2. Hmm. Okay, so... Could play bishop a6. Another move I'm considering, queen g5, maybe. It sets up the threat of bishop takes h3. It's a bit of an obvious threat, but it may force white to move their king. And I'm still kind of looking at that f5 move. So maybe, yeah, let's play this. Because I'm kind of gaining a tempo by threatening this in order to play f5. I'm just not sure if I play my bishop to a6 if... Long term, that's achieving much. I know white's going to be passive, but maybe I can keep my bishop here and support this pawn advance. Hope you guys are all doing very well as July is winding to a close here. Mm. Queen e2. Okay. Now, white overlooks this evidently. I'm not going to play it quite yet. I'm just double checking, making sure a move like f4, which would allow the queen to laterally defend the g2 pawn, isn't going to mess, mess me up. I think I could just take with the pawn. And on something like knight f3, I can play queen g3 and maintain the pin. So I'm feeling good about this. I think 
this will just cleanly win a pawn. But doesn't hurt to take a few extra seconds here and make sure. So, okay, bishop takes h3, non-threatening, maiden one. So white's got to do something about that. I would expect f3 here. Whereupon I may, okay, place queen there. Ah, but that's the problem because the knight on d2 is hanging. And then the bishop on c2 is hanging. Undefended pieces, guys. And I should probably take one right away. Because if I save my bishop or even play an in-between move, I'm not going to win as much material. Even if I play bishop g4, white can play queen e3 and defend. So yeah, queen takes d2, and when white takes h3, I'm going to take this bishop. Okay, let's do it. And I don't think my queen is going to get trapped behind enemy lines. There's too many places to go. Also, having my knight on c5 is nice. For instance, after queen takes c2, I can come back and pick up this e4 pawn. So white definitely played the last couple moves too fast. I mean, queen e2 was a tactical blunder, and queen f3 compounded that blunder. So bear in mind, yeah, and white just resigned because it is pretty catastrophic here. But bear in mind, if you make a mistake, it may be in your best interest, often is in your best interest, to slow down, take a little bit more time on the next move because you don't want to compound that mistake as white just did here because white could still fight on with a move like f3. And it's a bad position, but only one pawn lost. For the vast majority of you watching, one pawn is no big deal if you get on one pawn in the middle game. So, all right. Yeah, this system that white played is just a little too simplistic, playing bishop g5 and on h6 just taking on f6. In general, you should try to preserve your bishops against knights unless there's a good reason to trade them. So I traded my bishop for the knight, but the reason was I get to saddle white with doubled pawns, which is one of the classic goals of the Nimzo Indian defense, which is this opening I played here with bishop b4. So had white played bishop h4, I would have had a, a slightly more difficult decision. You know, do I play, let's say, g5, bishop g3, followed by knight e4? Do I play bishop take c3 check right away, as I might have done? Do I play something flexible like castles? But yeah, after this, I already feel like if anyone's better here, it's black in view of white's double pawns. Yeah, and I like how this shaped up for me. I think for white, it's probably better for white to keep some flexibility, maybe castle here, because I don't like this pawn structure that white got into. I think white was too quick to try to determine this pawn structure because it makes it very hard to trade off these uh, doubled C pawns. It's going to be tough anyways, even if white maintains the status quo here. But at least with this structure, which I've highlighted, white has a bit more fluidity with those pawns. Maybe white can dream of a C5 type move. But after the pawns get established on e4 and d5, it's very, very tough for white to get rid of these because, you know, c5, I'm going to constantly guard that square. And I think once I get my knight here, black is comfortably better. But, you know, white was still very much in the game up through here and especially on the next move. But queen g5, you always have to ask yourself in chess, what was the purpose of my opponent's last move? Okay, so queen g5. Something that should be sending alarm bells off in white's head is the fact that my queen is aligned with white's king. So in Tune Your Chess Tactics Antenna, Emmanuel Neiman talks about alignment. That's one of the biggest tactical signals in chess. So the queen aligned up with the king with just one scant pawn in between. That's That should indicate potential trouble on white's part. And had white stopped and thought about that, I think he would have realized that he needed to move his king or, or otherwise address that threat. But probably king h2 or king h1. It's the only good way to address that threat. But queen e2, and again, some of these moves were being played a little bit fast. Uh, on queen e2, white did spend 21 seconds to his credit. But up until this point, I think white was playing too quickly out of the opening. You know, some of these trades, don't just make trades because trades are quote-unquote safe moves. You can be conceding something when you make a trade. I mean, I already think bishop takes f6 early on kind of set the tone for this game. White was playing reasonable but not not very deep moves there was no real semblance of a plan here it's an issue i see a lot at this level and white gets into a middle game without too many prospects i mean i already would not want to play white's position here even though material it's materially it's equal so it's, it's in your best interest to slow down a little bit in the opening especially if you're out of your book moves and ask yourself okay do I have to you know, accept a potential long-term weakness like these doubled pawns? What are the implications of making 
a one for one piece trade. I'm not I don't want to just make a one for one piece trade because I know my opponent's probably going to recapture. That's not a good enough reason. You have to actually have to have a reason beyond that. Hopefully the trade is at least net neutral for you. Uh, ideally, there's a net gain from that trade. You know, every every trade that you're making, hopefully you can point to something that you're gaining unless it's completely forced. So yeah, some mindless trades and then inattentiveness to a potential tactic here with bishop takes h3 cause white's downfall and then compounding the air, yeah, queen f3, just losing sight of undefended pieces. So f3 would have kept white in the game. Okay, I don't think I need to click over to the analysis board. There's actually not too much I want to further discuss on this one. I think this was a pretty straightforward game. Um, I, I guess I will mention that had white not blundered here, so had white played something like king h1, I was planning on going f5 and looking for a structure like this. And I think this is a very nice position for black. If there's a trade, let's say takes, and I can look towards doubling in the long run, I'd still like to lay siege to these pawns, c4 and c3. So tough position. If you're playing the white side of the Nimzo Indian, you're allowing the Nimzo Indian, that is, by playing knight c3, which is fine. You can do that. I would recommend either queen c2, which is the move I have in my d4 course on chessable. Uh, e3 is another good option. You could play knight f3 is another decent option. There are quite a few choices here, actually. Even f3, looking for e4. If you don't like allowing the Nimzo Indian, then knight f3 on move 3, being able to meet bishop b4 with bishop d2, or even g3 going for the Catalan, for those of you who are a little bit higher rated, would be something to check out. Those are also good options. All right, so thanks to JR Binga for the game. I always appreciate um, the players who play these games. I'm just sending out or accepting random seeks on chess.com when I play these climbing the rating ladder games, but I know it's not easy to play, to play uh, hugely up in rating. So thanks to JR Binga for the game. Watch those, those trades. Ideally, you should be able to point to something that you're achieving from trades. And especially watch those undefended pieces, guys. Always, they're the genesis for many, many tactics in chess. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're doing well, and I'll be back again soon with another video.